welcome to MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Burn the witch! <laughs> nice. Also joining us today is Torterra. Just because I'm a different type of species does not make me a witch. No, no, I, I don't know what to say, man. If Silver says burn the witch. I don't know. Which witch are we bewitching? I don't know. Do I find have... that speciesist. Oh, man. I don't know, man. Do you guys have a sandwich? A sandwich? Oh. There you go. I could get, use a day at the beach. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Well, all right, then. Anywho, um, in today's episode, uh, we are going to review Little Witch Academia 2013. Uh, this is also a Patreon sponsor by Jeffrey. Thank you so much. So, before we head into the show, we, we, we need to kind of... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, Blame each other? <laughs> That, that and also uh, come out with the truth and whatnot. I'm, I'm forgetting the word, but long story short, uh, we had too late. <laughs> we had some <laughs> miscommunications, and yeah, while probably it's my fault, I think. But when I told the guys that we we're going to do this episode, I gave them a link. And said link was the IMDb page for Little Witch Academia 2013. Fair, fair enough. It's straightforward. Yes. Unfortunately, if you were to type in Little Witch Academia in uh, Netflix, you'll be bombarded with a few choices. And I'm guessing that the lines were crossed and the guys here watch the... First season, that's the 2017 Little Witch season one. So yes. Um, so yeah, j- just imagine us after finishing the recording, getting us ready, like, alrighty then, let's go review this. So did you guys, how do you guys like the episode? Do you like the tower in the dungeon? Suddenly. What, t- what tower? What, what d- dungeon? There was a forest, Norman. What forest? forest. What forest? <laughs> And what cockatrice are you mentioning? Cockatrice? There's no cockatrice. <laughs> well, of course there's a cockatrice. You couldn't miss it as they were flying away. I didn't see any. Did you see a dragon? What dragon? I didn't see no, no dragon. A, a, co- a cockatrice is not a dragon. And from this point on, we realized something. Did we not watch the same thing? Like, ah, <laughs> you're kidding me. You're kidding me here. Oh my goodness. It'll be like me saying, hey guys, let's watch Kingdom Hearts. Which one? You know, the one. Yeah, no, you know what this is? This is, oh, you want to talk about the premiere of My Little Pony. So we all watch Friendship is Magic. And we're like, oh, I love Nightmare Moon. Who's Nightmare Moon? <laughs> I'm talking about T-Rex. What? That's season, that's like season four. What? No, he's the boss of the movie. Movie? <laughs> we're talking about G1. <laughs> Oh, it's a good thing we could go on like movie. I I thought it was the Storm King. Storm what now? It's like I've, I've become an Abbott and Costello routine. I don't know. Third base. Even till this day, I still don't know who's on first. Who's on first? That's what I'm asking. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, love that one. <clears throat> but long story short, we have all gotten on the same page and we are going to cover the premiere or the pilot episode. Or the first one. Or the one that was done in 2013. A fun fact about this one. Uh, this original short film was made for... In part of the Young Animators Training Project. Anime uh, Mirai 2013 project. So it was kind of cool. And I think a lot of people really enjoyed it. Because the second uh, quote-unquote movie... It was fully funded on Kickstarter and whatnot. But that's a different story for a different day. So, this one, uh, sh- how should we do this? Like, scene by scene or teams? How is it, Silva? Well, I'm going to say blocks. Let's do block A, B, and C. Ah, all right. Then. And just for the folks listening at home or abroad, uh, block A is just getting to know the characters. Block B is the descent into the dungeon crawl. And block C is the climactic battle uh, around the wizard's tower and the sorcerer's stone. All right, then. So yeah, let's do that. Like A, B, and C. The introduction of the characters, the descent to the dungeon, and the final act. Yay. So let's go into... Well, not really first impression. Yeah, let's go into first impressions. 
So, Silver, what do you think? Well, okay, I'm I'm suddenly approaching this for a very weird way because I'll I'll say this about the 2017. I watched four episodes and thoroughly enjoyed them as I got to know these characters more. Uh, it's just really fun. So I come into this 2013 rendition, and there's the same characters are there. You recognize them, but you, it's a much much more rushed introduction, uh, establishing who they are, what they like, what they do, their modus operandi, and then you you get the the conflict going, the the physical conflict in the dungeon. You're like, oh my god, this school should not be. It is the most unsafe place for children. <laughs> I've ever seen. And, oh my god, what are you doing to those poor mythical creatures? Fluttershy is having a conniption over here. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into this, but just like, oh my god! You're sick! You're sick! <laughs> We're not even watching Ladybug. <laughs> Ladybug is weird for its own reasons, but this, <laughs> this, my god! There should be, is there no magical SBCA? <laughs> Uh, and Tara, what do you think? Put this simply in short form. It's Harry Potter, but anime, and the school is only filled with girls. <laughs> yeah, okay. But in my actual first impression, though, I mean, again, from jumping from the show to this pilot episode, I mean, I'm not going to give my full opinion on it yet, but uh, it was quite interesting. Okay, so here, here's one of the few things that you guys have something over me and that you guys catch the 2017 series before me. So, uh, Silver mentioned a bit that, okay, there's character build-up in the series, which is obvious, and in the one that we're going to watch now, it's kind of rushed because, well, they're more of establishing a world ASAP and it's kind of a short film and whatnot. So, yeah. And Tara, what do you think? Like, how, what's the feeling between that and this? I feel like that in the pilot, they, like, try to mix so much in together but with the series I mean I haven't gotten that far yet but so far it's working their way up and they kind of get some character development going alrighty then alrighty then I mean I can't really say much because I'm not that far into it but from the seri- from what I've watched so far in the series and the pilot episode I could see like what they wanted to do in the pilot episode hmm, alright and as for me I have heard a lot of good things about this series. Like, I I heard a lot of praises for it. And a lot of people love it and whatnot. And even uh, the director for this one directed an episode of Steven Universe. And uh, the guys from Little Witch inserted Steven Universe characters in their world. So, it's a lot of fun. So, I'm guessing that I would really like this show if I give it a shot. And it's always one of those cases where I haven't had the time or so on. And I'm guessing that with this right now, doing the Patreon uh, requesting, I'm guessing here's my time and here's me going over it. So anyway, um, if you guys are interested in watching Little Witch Academy, uh, Little Witch Academia, uh, give it a shot, pause here and go watch it first before listening to us. Go watch both versions. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. So we, you could share in our confusion and frustration. <laughs> there was a cockatrice. A cockatrice! <laughs> For shame, Norman. Ah! Welcome back. I, I hope you guys were not too confused. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so, anywho. Um, we start off with, well, the introduction of... The, well, magical world of wizardry. We are introduced to this show. I wanted to show, say show mare, but no, it's a show girl. Um, shiny, sh- shiny chariot. What's her name? Was it shiny? Shiny chariot. 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 Yeah. So she was there. She was performing a show and then they were showing this one specific little girl and she was so ooh and odd that it seems that she was inspired to be a witch. As time goes on, I'm going to say 10 years later, we are in the academy where we are introduced to the main character. And said character is Atsuko Kagari, or Ako for short. It seems that she's sleeping in class and said class is History 101. 
Although if I could back up for just one second, mm-hmm. uh, I watching the uh, the magic of Shiny Chariot that inspired Akko, I'm kind of surprised someone in the audience didn't go, wait, is that it? <laughs> I spent 50 bucks on these tickets. <laughs> that, that, that show lasted all of two minutes. <laughs> Dang scalpers were charged to be 300% markup. <laughs> well, like, ma- maybe that's why... <laughs> The greatest magic trick was making my money disappear. <laughs> the great and powerful trick has nothing to say. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe that's why they made it last a tad bit longer in the episode. The first one, not the pilot episode. <laughs> oh, God, you're going Star Wars number one. <laughs> we're talking about the first episode, not the pilot. The first episode. That's right. We're talking about the first episode now, not the pilot. <laughs> I don't know. Third base. Norman, you made us confused again. <laughs> oh, I think we're I think we're making him laugh into sickness. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I just this is all so confusing. I'm cold and scared, and there are wolves. I think I think it's all the witch is doing. <laughs> oh, boys! But yeah, I just. I just like I uh, Shiny Chariot's performance was lovely, but I just like wait. People paid good money, and you gave them like two minutes of of actual performance. What in the hoo ha? Uh, I'm guessing that there's more to it. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. There's they at least in the first episode it lasts a bit longer than just her making pretty thi- like over arcs appear out of nowhere, cute little fairies, and then a giant beast, and that's it. No, no comment. <laughs> Uh, but, but anywho, in history class, um, said lecturer was talking about uh, witches. Uh, we draw our power from the ley line and stuff. And whoever uses their magic for their own benefit will be eaten by their own greed and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. And Professor noticed Akko was sleeping in class and decided to wake her up in the most violent way possible. Actually, I can think of more violent ways. Uh, true. As we soon see, uh, Akko's friend Susie could probably wake her up in much more uh, extreme and horrifying ways. Oh, uh, yeah. True that. True that. But still, um, after she woke up, um, the professor asked, um, there's a line. I forgot the line. What, what was it? And uh, we are introduced to the antagonist, Diana. And Diana is one of those characters who... In how do I put this? She's Diamond Tiara, but snooty. Yes. Really? I, if we're going with the Harry Potter analogy, she's more a Draco Malfoy in my eyes. Yeah, true that, true that. But at least she's not a jerk. She's more of an elitist. Wait a minute. Which is a way of being a, being a jerk. Yeah, I but mean. still. This just clicked into my head. They must be connected. Diana's blonde. Draco's blonde. They're both English. I thought Diana was French. According to the wiki, she hails from Great Britain. Oh, really now? Huh. Shows me why, you know. And if it's on a wiki, it must be true. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, let's see. Oh, okay. Here's one of the few things I like about the witches or in this series. Like, they are... They, they come from different countries. Um, like, you mentioned Silver Diana comes from the Great Britain. Uh, Akko here is from Japan. Uh, her friend Lotte Jensen is from Finland. And Susie Maniac here is from Southeast Asia. Oh, wow. Okay. The wiki actually says the Philippines. Oh, really now? Hmm. Because uh, for me, I'm watching yeah. the uh, Little Witch Academia Wikia. So it's the Philippines. Okay. I'm on Wikipedia. See, this is why we have trouble communicating. We're all on different websites. <laughs> yep. We we're all getting confused our... again. We can't, we can't even agree on where we're supposed to research. <laughs> But still, um, what, but still, at least we're getting different sources, so yay, much more versatility. But still, um, let's carry on. <clears throat> so, we we go to the cafeteria where we see the characters, well, showing some personality. Akko here is the hot-blooded one. Uh, Susie here is kind of the. A potion mixer and likes to experiment on people. She's the mean one. And uh, Lotte here is the bookworm. And we get to see them interacting with each other. And Akko here is inspired 
by uh, Shiny Chariot to join or to become a witch. And when she talks about that, we see that Diana comes in and says that, oh, uh, Shiny Chariot is a fraud. Nobody in the wizarding world likes what she did. And she's showing a bad example of what wizards are. I tell you, there, there's a different kind of witch they're t- apparently teaching at this school. And it starts with a B. <laughs> Oh man, who? I mean, Diana's elitist. I won't say that she's mean. The teachers are okay from the pilot. Are you kidding? You do know what they, what they put these girls through in the second part, don't you? We're such good teachers. Now go face this Minotaur. <laughs> well, before <laughs> that, uh, we have to learn. Oh, before, <laughs> yes, Silva. Before that, before that, oh, let's go into this dank dungeon in the dark and just say, oh, use whatever you learned. In this process, yeah, that'll be fine. That'll go great. It'll go great. Yeah. But so you want to hop onto that or go to the flying lesson first? Oh, the flying lesson. Well, there's a sharp drop drop off in that class. <laughs> yeah, let's just say that um, most of the witches here know how to fly a broom, and they've been flying for a while now. And this class here is just them stretching their legs and. Uh, Realchemating themselves with flying, except Aku never flight before, so this is a sudden drop for her. A sudden drop off, and uh, but again, it's like, uh, yes, I'm just going to put this one instructor in charge of this entire class of flying. No safeguards, no assistance to catch people who fall. No one at the end saying, "Okay, come this way, come this way." Yes, we are good teachers. Yay. I realize I'm sounding like I hate this thing. I'm just, I'm mostly just pointing out, I, I love the overall experience, but when you get to the nitty gritty, you just realize, my goodness, this school is unsafe. Oh, yeah, true that. But anywho. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, Aku falls and kind of survives, but hurts herself. And, well, she just, uh, the next scene later, she's just in class talking about, oh, um, how she's inspired by Shiny Chariot to be a Kama Witch and stuff. And, her classmates or her best friend says that you know that Shiny Chariot is a fraud and whatnot, and nobody in the Wizarding World says that she's awesome. And like with that, it hurts Akko's feeling, and she just says like, "Screw you guys, I'm going to bed." <laughs> so next scene, I think this is the part B where we get to the adventure, and this is the part where things get a bit dangerous. So the teacher just tells the students that. Okay, class, we are go. I'm going to put you to a test. You have three hours to complete it. Uh, go to this dungeon, collect loot, and be careful of monsters. They will hurt and kill you. Did you sign the waiver? Yes, you did. Okay, good. Have fun. Even Susie knows the RPG element. <laughs> Did she actually use a curse word? Uh, for me, it's crappy. Because I can... Yeah, for me, it is too. <coughs> Ooh, Norman said it. Sweetie Pot's going to get you. Crappy's yeah, not he said bad. it. <laughs> Crappy's not bad. Son, wait, what? Yeah. Wait, who taught you these things? You wash your mouth out with soap, young man. No. <laughs> like, I give a flying feather. <laughs> uh, but anywho. You, you, dude, speak with some... That's not a word. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> In all these years, I never thought I would hear Silver say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everyone thinks me so puritanical. <laughs> it's always oh, I love it's it. Always a patron support that cracks me up. <laughs> mm. well, we go beyond our realm, but I've apparently broken Torterra's innocence. <laughs> Sorry, Torterra, <laughs> you're you're now dealing with the real world, Quill. I, I looked up to you. <laughs> You could look up to me. You just have to give me your ears while you look. <laughs> I consider crappy to be a curse word. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's not as hard. Yeah. Oh, boy. Woo. Yeah, where, where do you get this? <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> Silver's in the hood now. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Then I have to. Then you have to get Safi so I can be all in the abonics up in this shit. <laughs> Ooh, but then you... <laughs> okay. Yeah, Sweetie Bot's going to have a field day yep. with me. <laughs> anyway, oh, oh, 
So, uh, they go into the dungeon, and Aku here is all fired up. She's gun ho and ready to make that mistake where she opens the mimic and gets eaten. Yeah, first thing about Dark Souls, check the chains or hit it before you open it. Yes, but nah, she goes down the cave and Lotte tells her to slow down. Uh, she awakens the flame and the flame bursts and makes everything brighter. Ako says, boo, you make the game not more fun anymore, something like that. And she discovers a monster and she zaps it. Yay. But this is a cute little monster. It's not hurting anybody. It's just, look at the Mickey sounds. And she's like, I'm going to murder you. Chase you down. <laughs> the poor creature's like, oh, spare me. <laughs> oh, God. Don't, 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 don't do that voice, please. That reminds me of the Black Cauldron. <laughs> oh, good, good, you're not bad. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Googie, you already meant to bring joy and happiness. Why are you still in Googie's throat? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Hey, that sounds like Googie to you, Norman? For me, it almost sounds like Gollum from Lord of the yeah, Rings. No, that's Googie. That's Googie, all right. No, my precious is Cauldron. <laughs> we loves it, sir. But anywho, so while Akko is trying to demolish or destroy a pouring, we see that Diana is fighting off a bug and whatnot. And she just says, this is all the dungeon can afford. Like, this is terrible. This is just low-level crap. And... Again, I consider that. It's not that hard of a curse word. But anywho, um, her two friends, uh, I'm going to call her uh, Silver and Diamond, they point out behind her and there is a cow. <laughs> Said cow is actually Iron Will. When you come into my dungeon, you best expect a bludgeon. <laughs> Yay! So anywho... <clears throat> We cut back to Akko chasing down the pouring, and they hear a scream. They run to the sound of danger and discover that the Minotaur is bashing on a shield that Diana is casting. Eh. Truly, this is a highly evolved school. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Professor X is sitting off to the side like, "Hey, you ladies need to tone it back on that." No, man. Like, have you seen the Danger Room, the Wolverine program? <laughs> Not fun. Not for beginners. That's where you could just shut it down if things are going south. This is a real-life Minotaur. Soon to be formerly life Minotaur. <laughs> yes, and talking about former, um, while the Minotaur is distracted, Sushi just comes up to it and says, Yo, Mr. Cow, uh, could you open your mouth a bit? And <laughs> Sushi just <laughs> fed it some... Really, really bad, bad stuff. Like, really, really bad stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes. Bad, bad stuff. Real, re really bad. It's a, it melts! <laughs> it's got a skeleton. It is being dissolved alive! <laughs> <laughs> this is some sadistic stuff! I know, and Suchi just smiles and says, Oops, I made it too strong. Woo! Girl has problems. You sick! You sick! I agree with that one. I agree with that statement there. <laughs> it's just, it's like, why do we watch these things? Because they're. What is with children's entertainment? Are you sure this is children's entertainment anymore? I don't know, but I'm afraid. <laughs> well, this is a new generation, Silver. You gotta stick with the program. <laughs> this new generation of acid melters, is it? <laughs> I mean, I was shocked too, but you know, you just gotta roll with it. I can't roll with it because it doesn't roll, it melts. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> so anywho, after the chaos happens, um, it melts through the floor and Diana says, okay, um, let's go down some more and explore. I, I want to explore more. And Silver and Diamond just says like, hey, um, no, it's too dangerous. And Diana says, yeah, if you guys want to stick around with this uh, blank flanks, you're most welcome to. Why did you name one of them Silver? I feel like I've been slighted. I feel like I've been cast out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I just call her Spoon. Yeah, let's call her Spoon. Yes. So, yes, yeah, Spoon and Diamond just follows Diana to the hole underground and so on. Akko here just says, like, no, we, we, we have to one-up her. We have to one-up her because we must not lose to her and stuff. Yes. So, once Diana reaches the bottom, she discovers an Iron Maiden. Rock on! Yeah, yeah. 
so anywho, the Iron Maiden is sealed and it's clearly meant to keep people away from it. But Diana being the egotistical freak that she is, she opens it up and discovers, oh no, a baby lizard. <laughs> and Spoon and Diamond just says, oh, this small thing, oh, we'll, we'll easily deal with it. And they blast it to death. But not really, because it, Lizard is a magic absorbing dragon, which kind of is not good when you're blasting magic at it. Which is stored in the same place as you're hosting a scavenger hunt. Granted, it's probably only uncovered because of the acid pit that they opened in the floor when they murdered a <laughs> creature that was imprisoned. This is sick. <laughs> it's really sick. Not only that, it was part of the school, and like I guess the school put it there and now all of a sudden it's gone it's like wait where's that minotaur we had here in the basement <laughs> oh we were saving him for the quidditch match <laughs> he was gonna be our run on mascot <laughs> oh boy but anywho um Akko and the gang walk into a kind of junk room and Akko discovers something but before she can go up to it the dragon blasts a hole and kind of runs away then uh, yes from the I from the Iron Maiden, they say, run to the hills. <laughs> run for your life. <laughs> Diana comes out and says, where did the creature go? And Akko says, uh, you mean that huge dragon? And long story short, Diana confessed that she was the one that released the dragon. And it's her responsibility to go and catch it. And she borrows the broom from the rest and flies to chase it down. Akko wants to go after her, but before she does that, she goes picks up the treasure that she found. And it is the shiny rod. <laughs> Orion, obey my rod. <clears throat> you, you are now Steve 1. You are Steve 2, and you will obey my rod. <laughs> oh, but anywho, we get to see the other students gathering their loot, which they're proud of because they... We're not greedy like Diana. And suddenly, Dragon comes out and says, Rawr, I'm angry. I'm going to burn and eat people. As he burns through cottages! <laughs> burns through cottages! And the trout door comes in the night! <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, uh, what do we call this? The teacher presses the emergency button. The gates close. And it's time for the students to blast it with more magic. Before the lecturer can say stop, it's too late now. Now the dragon is grown into a very big dragon. Diana comes in and says that, oh no, it's gotten big. What to do now? The lecturer uh, was Ursula? Ursula Callisti? So just call her Ursula. So Ursula calls Diana down, says what happened and whatnot. And she tasks Diana with getting the students out of the building. But before everyone could take action, Akko just comes in and says, Yo, teach, look what I found. It's a very shiny rod. Which, which Ursula is just like, oh, you poor unfortunate soul. <laughs> yes. I had to. Well, I had to. Well, she's kind of oblivious too. It's like, hey, I got, I got a shining rod. It's like, oh, yeah, you don't notice the giant crack on the wall that the dragon burst through? Until she noticed the seven stones or the seven stars, was it? And they're shiny. Like, she's leading on more than she knows. So with that, she tasks Akos to go up to the sorcerer's stone. I mean, philosopher's stone. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, me pretentious. No. She tasks Akos to go up to the top of the tower to get the... Or to go to the sorcerer's stone. So she can protect it with the magic and whatnot. I don't really remember. And... Ask Diana to follow her to kind of save the other students. Now we go to part C where action! Action is abound. Adventure! Excitement! Yay! So the teacher tries to attract the dragon with some magic and whatnot. And we get to see Akko and her friends going up to the top of the tower. Uh, the dragon follows suit but is distracted by younger more. Healthier maidens. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Wow, dude. Really? They they made I a mean, joke in there too. 
I I know, but you're taking it like a step even further. I mean, you geeky little devil. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, the dragon noticed that Akko or whatever it is uh, flying up to the tower because there's a lot of magic there. And Suchi says, okay, let me handle this. Like, it worked the last time, so it's going to work this time around. And who knew dragon were immune to poison? Hmm. Who knew you can't murder vi- a living creature in, uh, twice? Oh, but what am I about to say? If I'm going to be pointing out the specific thing over here, mm-hmm. uh, dragons do take poison damage from Pokemon. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, that's what okay, on. We're running on Dark Souls logic here. I'm sorry, but when I see a dragon and when I see poison, the first thing that clicks into my head is, is it super effective or not? <laughs> Fairies. That's why I think when I think about dragons in Pokemon, fairies. I think of dragons. I think of classical dragons guarding a horde in a cave. You need someone to slay them, which is representative of entering the subconscious and slaying your own selfishness or uh, neuroses. Well, and you say Pokemon. Yes, is there a problem with that? Well, when you ask me about dragons, I think about Goku and how dumb he is. (laughs) I think I think of rich symbolism, and you think of ooh, a shiny. <laughs> no, that's more that's more of a sapphire because I'm not really that much into the shinies. <clears throat> oh, dear. You got the shin in. <laughs> but anywho, getting back on track, uh, Lote never. <laughs> Lote and Aku flies to the top, but Aku has sorry, uh, Lote has a bad landing, and somehow uh, being up there, uh, the rod is somehow attracting or is reacting to the stone and somehow is absorbing the magic. And the dragon here is trying to eat at the stone, so Akko blasts it or blasts the stone away and being the genius that she is, runs for the rock and jumps off the building. And here's the thing, she's confident, she's filled with determination and she... She calls the rod to change into a broom, which doesn't. And by this point, the dragon is already and is going to eat her. Oh no, episode ends. Or is it? <laughs> Seeing the giant dragon fills you with determination. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but anywho, so as Aqua falls down, the dragon chases after suit. Somehow, um, Aqua just throws away the stone. I, I don't quite remember. But long story short, Akko is riding on the back of the dragon and she feels not ready or she feels crappy because, oh no, I can't do this. Like, I'm going to die. The dragon's going to destroy everything. And she hears the voice of the uh, silver chariot or shiny chariot. She hears the voice of shiny chariot. We fills her with more determination and she kind of stops the dragon. And the way that she stops the dragon is really awesome. And she just casts a spell which turns her rod into a bow and she releases the dragon. Swells it up like a t- tick on uh, too much blood just pops it. <laughs> it has this look. It has this look like, why? I was only doing my poem in my nature. <laughs> yep. You attacked me. <laughs> yep. And, and so... We it fills her with determination, but oh look, oh look, she went the genocide route. Now we're gonna get the bad ending. It's silver. It's like big happy fireworks. Yeah. See, I want to say something no. about this third scene because it's kind of related to the first episode, but someone hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> not my fault. We scheduled for this one, not that one. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, anywho, uh, there, there's a lot of gaps in between that we miss, but hey, uh, we're just going to highlight the parts that we kind of remember and whatnot. And for you guys at home to go watch it because this is really entertaining. So, anywho, um, after the dragon has been defeated, Happy Fireworks Festival activates. Uh, Aku is still falling down to her doom, and before she could hit the ground and go splat. Diana comes along and saves her. Diana asks, how did you know about the shiny arrow thing? Or shiny arc? And 
Aku just says, huh? You know about the shiny arc too? Are you a closet uh, shiny chariot fan? And they banter for a bit and it was pretty fun. See, they should have the internet so that they can uh, they can just have a bunch of shinies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So What's that supposed that, to mean? <laughs> uh, with that, a lot of other wishes come flying by and episode ends. Well, Torterra, if you want, we can call them chariots. <laughs> mm, no, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, but so, anywho, uh, let's head into final thoughts or discussion. What do you think, Silver? Do you have anything to discuss or should we just go to final thoughts? Oh, no, there's there's stuff to discuss. Uh, and this is true of both the this premiere and also the 2017 premiere. All right. So, discussion then. So, uh, what do you have to say, man? Well, I was talking with a friend earlier this week and... You'll forgive me if this seems to arc off, but I promise it will come back around. It's okay, go ahead. She was saying that a majority of the Game of Thrones fan base online is female. And I was like, really? Why is that? Because they identify with the female characters. I was like, really? I mean, I, I really wouldn't want anyone holding up Cersei Lannister as a role model. She says, no, it's not about role models. It's about vulnerability. And it took a little bit of cultural terminology to, to explain this. It's like having... Female superheroes, you got you know your Wonder Woman, Batgirl, Supergirl, and a, and a variety of others. They're all they're representing women in a strong role, but they're also so powerful and so composed. They might be strong women, but they may not be relatable. Then my friend she brings up Sailor Moon, who is sort of the antithesis of that. She is a crybaby, cowardly, hyperactive, clumsy. And yet, much like the women in Game of Thrones, you become relatable to her vulnerability uh, as she struggles with this. And then, bringing that on back to uh, Little Witch Academia, you have our lead heroine is not good at magic, does not come from a prestigious line of uh, witches. She is very vulnerable and very flawed. And it's not, these aren't episodes where she always wins. And yet that makes her more relatable. It's also kind of funny that while they're digging through the garbage of a room in the dungeon, there is a unicorn toy filled with mag maggots uh, that looks like Twilight Sparkle. Yep, I remember that. And I remark on the contrast. My Little Pony often shows characters being very vulnerable, flawed, but they always triumph in the end. The episode wraps up with a lesson is learned and... They, they succeed at what they were trying to do. Little Witch, they learn a lesson or they grow as people, but they don't necessarily succeed. I actually enjoy that. I think I, I see what my friend was talking about in that. Hmm. That's fascinating because the way that you just explain it, the, the difference between ponies and Little Witch here, I think it's one of those things where it's the anime trope thing to do where your hero doesn't really need to win all the time. Um, an example of this uh, thing happening for me, or the, why, where I experienced this, was in a card game anime called Card Fight Vanguard. Uh, this was the original version from 2010, I think. And the way that the lead character here is that he's a total noob. And when he was... First starting out, his opponent says that, okay, uh, you want this card back? Fight for it. If you win, you get it back. If you lose, it's mine. But I'll lend it to you because this is part of your deck. So on. Okay. So as he plays, he learns at the same time. So obviously he's going to win the first episode. So yay, awesomeness. So we get to see the kind of uh, lead character wins trope. Okay. But... In the second episode, he lost, but he's still learning because he's still a noob and he doesn't really know how to play the game that well. So in every episode that goes on, he plays and loses but keeps learning until to a point where he just keeps winning because he's the main character. He knows what he's doing and whatnot. So those kind of things I don't see often, but I do appreciate them. Well, excellent. We've managed to work Game of Thrones, DC Superheroines, uh, card Game Vanguard, and Sailor Moon, and My Little Pony interview about Little Witch Academia. Yeah, now we need Torterra. To... Oh, yes, we Torterra added Pokemon to this because <laughs> dragons. 
and poison types. Mm-hmm. Well, let's not forget fairies, because which uh, are technically fairies since they're magical, you know? Yeah. Don't forget Dark Souls, I... Silver. I mentioned Dark Souls. <laughs> I have Dark Souls, <laughs> too. <laughs> I'm surprised we genuinely haven't worked Kingdom Hearts into this. <laughs> well, oh, boy. We could also mix in, I guess, Dungeons and Dragons. Well, kind of. Because with the Minotaur and how they're going through the dungeon. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and, and there's a dragon. There a... <laughs> yeah, we're being quite literal in this case. Uh, but so, uh, Terra, what, what do you think, man? Like, how do you feel? Like, what do you think? Uh, well, I I really quite enjoyed it. I mean, jumping from the first episode to the pilot, you could tell there was a lot of exposition on talking about. It's like they're telling her, oh, yeah, she's not really a witch. Uh, we they don't even show how she got to the school. They're basically just saying all this stuff on how this she did this and whatnot. It's like okay, but I want to see this happen. But you know, we me and Silver already saw this happen. But you haven't, Norman. Yeah, you know. But this here's the thing about the pilot because pilot episodes are usually there to speed things up, attract the potential watchers to see if they like it. Oh, I know that. Not, yeah. So it's like I I kind of understand. Like it's a yeah. rush. So. Whenever I see this, but here's the thing. When I see this and when I know what's going to happen later on, like, this raises the question of, do I even need to watch this 2013 uh, movie or whatever it is? And also the 15 movie that we'll be doing later on in the future. And what do you guys think? Should we or should we not? Because in for me personally, I say yes, because this is part of the history of the show. Having already watched the 2017, I can say, yeah, this is fun. I like this series. So I'd be down with talking about it more. All right, then. All right, then. So it, it's it's interesting. I, I want to see where this goes. I want to see where this goes. So I'll plan. Do something with it later on. Yes, yes, yes. So is there anything more? Because I feel that Diana needs a say because her characteristics not bad. I do like her as an antagonist. Like, she's not the typical bully trope kind of character. Like, she's more of a adagio. Well, I'm going to bring another anime into the mix. Way back when, I watched an anime called Kaleido Star. Oof, what's that? In some ways, the structure is similar to Little Witch Academia. A young woman go tr- from Japan travels to America, where she wants to join a Cirque du Soleil-style acrobat performer called Kaleido Star. It's a similar dynamic. She's energetic. She's uh, eager. She's more uh, skilled, but very has very little experience in gymnastics. Or how how should I better say that? She she has practiced gymnastics, but she's not experienced as a performer. In a very similar relationship, there's a the the lead acrobatic, uh, the star of the show, is kind of like Diane. Very proud. Very composed but very judgmental and very quick to dismiss because she's lived her life by very high standards. And I know I made the Draco Malfoy comparison earlier, but Diane, she's braver, more accountable, and has a strong sense of responsibility. But you can tell that the life she's lived has forced her to be somewhat rigid. And again, I see, I remember that from Kaleido Star. I think there is a, there are several tropes at play here. Well, another thing too about her is that she's not, like technically a bully like yeah she picks on the main characters and whatnot but she also cares about the students like when uh professor ursula tells her hey help the students out she doesn't be like oh, sh- they're not that important they don't they i know i'm better than them. no she actually helps them out her two cronies are are the real bullies yes yeah i i, I know i don't know their name but when i see those two it feels like they're uh diamond tiara and silver spoon so it's like mm, really they're the atypical bully kind of trope. So, eh, if it works, it works, I guess. But, eh. but Diana's interesting. I do like her in the pilot. I'm I'm interested in seeing where she goes in the series. If she's still, if she has some motivation or improvement and whatnot. Like, do we get to know more of her later on? Like, does she have a tragic past, like her father or whatnot, something like that? You know. So we'll we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. And other than that, shiny chariot. Any opinion on her? <laughs> well, I, I will say uh, there is that little teaser of uh, red hair. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, 
it's I kind of know it. It's like a red herring. So who knows? Ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh, is that a pun? <laughs> is that a pun? That better be a pun. <laughs> no, but I I do like Trixie here. Like this version of Trixie is really fun, and I can see why the Wizarding World doesn't like her. If she's anything like Trixie, yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Shiny chariots seem more positive. I mean, oh yeah, belief is your is your own magic. That's that's very not tricksy. Oh, true, but you can feel the tricksiness. At least she's not the great and powerful shining chariot. Yes, marvel before the great and powerful shiny chariot. Now obey my rod. <laughs> I okay, see. I I attempt doing that, but I can't roll my tongue. Oh, obey my rod. No, I cannot play the <laughs> rod. <laughs> Oh, boys. Uh, oh, rad, 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 rad. Show uh, off. Oh. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho. Uh, Can't beat my cussing <laughs> face. I'm going to say a bad <laughs> word. <laughs> oh, boy. So, anywho, um, I, I think that's about it for this. And final thought. Silver, what do you think? This is a very enjoyable show with very likable characters and uh, an interesting world. I like that they set rules in place for how magic works. Uh, it, I'm coming at this premiere from a weird perspective, having seen what I consider to be a bit more fleshed out or gradually paced 2017 version. But the, but the t- original 2013 has a lot of fun to it. It's just that if you sit and think about it, you realize... The witching world is very cruel, maybe by necessity, because they have all these dangerous creatures that you're supposed to run into and dispose of in quite horrific ways. And yet that might reflect, well, this world is not so gentle or safe as what uh, we people assume is the real world. True, 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 true. And I think there's this difference between me and you guys where you've guys seen the series while I haven't, so... For me, and my views, is like, okay, I know the pilot's this, and it's very interesting. The world is kind of, quote-unquote, established, where if you uh, selfishly use magic, it will come back at you and nip you in the butt. And the base are there, so we need to see what is bad, like, what is dark magic, what is good magic, and so on. Anyway, Tara, what do you think? I think this is a really great show. I mean... At first, when I first, before I saw it, I was curious to be like, oh, this looks like an anime, and I don't watch a lot of anime, but this looked interesting. I'm watching, like, ooh, very fancy light show. The animation looks very interesting, and as it went on, I got more and more into it, and at the end, I'm like, okay, I gotta see more of this. (laughs) Awesome, awesome, awesome. And yeah, same here for me. Like, after watching the pilot, like, oh, wow, this is a lot of fun. Like, I can see why people really enjoy this. And with my conversation with Silver, when he said that oh, he watched uh, two episodes already, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking that, oh, probably he's watched the, uh, what you call this? What was it called? Like the Little Witch Academy and the Enchanted Parade. So I was like, oh, okay, he's so excited. But we have to only just watch the first one. We don't need to watch the Enchanted Parade, Silver. So I was like, oh, okay. So I'm <laughs> sure what I know. Well, what can you say? Communication difficulties. It's a thing. Mm-hmm. But in the end, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. For me, I would highly recommend watching Little Witch. Like, even if I did watch this pilot, it's one of those things where I will watch the others and see how it goes. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Uh, so, oh, what do we do now? Do we talk about what we do next week or this more? I'm confused for a bit. I think I'm done. Next, we'll have a podcast on cursing and what words we consider to be actual cuss words. And Sweetie Bot will explode. <laughs> no. So, anywho, yeah. Um, with that, I think we shall see what we're going to do next week. And Silver, what may that be? Well, we're off on the road to friendship. It's time to go back to ponies. Uh, yeah, that's good. Oh, I love that episode. That episode was a lot of fun. Well, that's that's why we're going to go talk about it. We tackled Yakety Sax not too long ago. Now it's time for an episode that I think has more positive viewing. Yep, and an awesome song. Like, I love the song. The song is... Oh, you know what? I'm going to save my full reaction and feelings towards that song later. Yes. 
Yeah, so, you should probably say that. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so, anywho, yes. Uh, next episode, we are going to do um, Road to Friendship, was it? Yes. yes. So, we're going to do Road to Friendship. That will be a lot of fun. So, yeah. Um, do check us out there. So, anywho. Um, what was I supposed to do? Yes, yeah, script. Yes. So, anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the Twitters under uh, Silver Quill. You can find me on DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. And of course, you can always find me on the YouTubes. Just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact. Uh, and-, and every every Wednesday on Equestry Daily, you can find a, either a comic book uh, review or... Or an editorial written by me awesome. and my rolling R's. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Silver, your recent video, uh, the main attraction, was it? Uh, was really awesome. Love it. Oh, thank oh, you. Yeah, I definitely like that uh, kiss outfit you were in. <laughs> Rock on! With the brutality. I don't know if some people understood that, though. <laughs> what, the kiss or the brutality? The kiss. <laughs> Ooh, damn. Well, then, these youngins are probably too be- busy playing their Pokemans. <laughs> Oh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Hey, I, just because I play my Pokemon does not mean that I still don't understand Kiss. <laughs> I know, I'm just giving you a hard time. If anything, you should give Safi a hard time. <laughs> I I would if she'd come back on the show. <laughs> uh, problems, problems, problems. But no, uh, I, I do love it. Like, uh, you, you still carry on that joke when you did when, when we reviewed this a while back. Uh, never calling uh, Rara her real name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was the most fun. So, yeah. Uh, so, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, everyone can find me on Twitter, Facebook, DeviantArt, or Twitter, or YouTube, under the name Torterra1324. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. Also, do re- also, and also do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You'll get this, but only mobile. Yay. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, The Cat, Jeffrey, and Rest of Life. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I am the Torterra. And we will guys catch you next week with another magical episode of the BS show. See ya. Which is your say. Bye bye. <laughs>、oh, excuse me, I'm gonna cast a spell now to get myself a pointy pony OC. I'm gonna cast a curse.